Get on in here, everybody. It's time. It's question and answer time, and I have to run around the desk on my set and get things going here. Let's see. Where are we? Come on in. There we go. Getting everything going. Yeah. Let's see if I can get some comments up here. We have lots of stuff to talk about today, so no music. Let's see if I can get everything adjusted just right. I have coffee, and Robert just brought me a flower, and I just spilt it. Oh, my. Anyway, uh, Robert was out in, t in the woods, and Tulip was with him, and Tulip has to be the center of attention. And this is a trillium, and it's not fully bloomed yet. And Tulip knocked it off. So here I am with part of a trillium. I had it in a little cup, and I just knocked it over. So see if I have some water here because it needs water luckily it got knocked over on a purple rag so here's my little trillium let me I had it opened up the secret to keeping things blooming once they've been just accidentally knocked off is to cut the stem under the water Cut the stem under the water, and that way it starts to to grab the um, to. Oops, that went on my timer that time. So I need to clean up a mess. <laughs> so get on in here. We got I'm trying to clean up my desk. It's kind of getting to me. Yep. Put this over here. That's for to Friday. I'm just futzing around, y'all, till everybody gets in here. We're getting close. We're getting close. Anyway, we have new supplements, folks. Uh, we have new supplements. We have... Um, our body clutter line of supplements. We have calcium magnesium, D3. Uh, this one is B complex and CoQ10. I can't hold them all, but we have them. I may have to glue them all together so I can show them at you. you know, and they come in a package, which is discounted. We call, Leanne likes to call it a bundle. So these are like the basic supplements that you need to keep, keep your body moving. And most women are deficient in D. Most women are deficient in uh, B, B vitamins. And we need B vitamins. We need folic acid for, for babies. And... It's just some basic supplements, core supplements. We call them the core four. When we were talking about um, the supplements, we wanted to do the basic ones because if you've got calcium, magnesium, you're going to have strong bones, and magnesium keeps, keeps everything working. Then you have the D3. There was a study this morning that came out that I saw several weeks ago before just before the pandemic hit, that um, people who have deficiencies in vitamin D, D3 to be exact, that they get hurt worse by, by the virus. Now, it's not saying that D3 cures the virus. No, that's not what we're saying at all. But it keeps your immune system strong. I've been taking D3... Uh, since probably 2004 when my doctor prescribed it for me and it it's just changed 
my life. I am rarely sick. The last time I was sick was in April of last year. And I, it, it hit me hard. It hit me fast. And it, 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 I, I want to be tested for the antibodies because I think this virus was, was floating around. It's been floating around a long time and it's just now gotten all the publicity that it needed to become a pandemic. So thank God for the little things. I got my little trillium. We still have several in the, in the, in the woods. So it's not like we're destroying them, but Tulip did destroy this one. She likes to be the center of attention. As y'all saw on Sunday, when I did my tea time outside, she liked being the center of attention. So I've got questions. Uh, keep, keep, um, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. You've kept us going when everybody else is shutting down. You have kept us going and it's because of our wonderful purple rags and silver rags and pink rags and alternatives to being, not being able to find uh, sanitizing wipes. So we put together uh, uh, where other people were gouging process, we cut them. We cut them. And so thank you so much. And we're keeping our floors sanitized with our, our big purple mop and we're getting things done and I'm just really proud of you really proud of all the things you've done so uh I'm trying to think what have I done with my questions I thought I had them let's see where did I Wait, I got to go look at something right quick. Liz has my questions on Slack. Let me pull them up to see if I have printed out the right ones. Excuse me, folks. Well, that's not them. Let me see if I put the wrong ones. I'm going under. Well now. Let me play some music, folks, and I'll go print it out again. Hold on a second. I'm going to give you a little... I want you to do, um, grab your mops, everybody. Let's grab our mops. And while I go get, get this printed, we're going to play a song and get some stuff done. We're doing the two minute cleanup. Ready, set, go. Why isn't that working? It's just one of those days, y'all know it. Start back over. I don't know why we don't have music, folks. We don't have music. Let me change my input. TV. There we go.
we can do it. Look, we almost stopped. Okay, folks, I think my printer has died on me. I'm not getting anything to print. I thought something printed, but it wasn't. So I'm going to have to do questions off of my iPad. But I have them right here, and we I may have to get a little closer to me. But let's get started. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, I Okay, the first question is, I'm new. What should I read slash do first? Well, first thing you got to do is go shine your sink. And if you want to watch something, go, go to my YouTube channel and watch my shiny sink video. If you've never been to my YouTube channel, it pops up first. But look for my shiny sink video and that is going to help you understand and help you to get rid of your perfectionism so that you can get some stuff done. So folks, you got to jump in and do something. And if you'll do, like we've got the core four supplements, we've got the core four habits you need to implement. Shine your sink. Get dressed to lace up shoes every day. Keep your dishes done. Run your dishwasher, empty it, or wash your dishes as you're cooking dinner and do that anyway. Uh, and then do a load of laundry every day. If you'll do those four items every single day, you're gonna, your whole house is going to change. And that's what you do first. Now, if you wanna read a book, uh, and it's according to, to um, your age, but, this is a 31 baby step books. It, it's a great book to get started with, but it's not the be all and end all. All of our books work. The Chaos Cure book, my newest book, it's it's a great book for if you just want to open up and get a glean a little bit of wisdom. It's a fun book. This is a book we put together that's the 31 baby steps. We have um, our body clutter book if you need to get a handle on on. Um, What's going on inside of you? That'll that's a good place to start too. So everybody drink your coffee. So let's see where this is all wet. Next question. But you gotta get started. So if you're brand new, go get dressed and then go shine your sink. Yesterday I spent um 30 minutes playing in my kitchen, but I was putting up all my baking stuff because I've decided I am not a baker. Leanne came to that, that realization earlier than I did, but we decided we're not bakers, but it's fun to think about and it's fun to watch YouTube videos, but we are cooks. And I heard something today that I just thought was amazing and it, it shows me, how great all of you are. What I saw today, or what I heard, I was listening to uh, Fox Business and they interviewed somebody who puts together these cooking packs of food that gets shipped to your door. What she said is people around the world are getting more confidence in their kitchens. And I think it's because of Leanne Ely in her kitchen showing you every day what to cook. And us talking about what's for dinner, because when we can do one dish meals, 
one crock pot meal, one oven meal, when we can do those things, it makes cooking easy. When we can put together a casserole and stick it in the oven, when we can um, plan for leftovers to be utilized with, uh, you know, like Leanne's rubber chicken, when you can do that, you can change the way you look at fixing dinner. It's no longer run through the golden arches like Leanne has said for many years. We don't have to do that anymore because we can make a wonderful meal at home and because our kitchens are clean, Leanne says, you, get, you help them get their kitchens clean and I'll help them get dinner on the table. Half the battle is starting with a clean kitchen. If we can do this, our homes and our families are gonna be fed we're going to have homes that bless us every single day, and it's going to change our lives. It really is. So folks, take a few minutes, get dressed to lace up shoes while you're listening to me. Go in and shine your kitchen sink. You can take me with you because I know you've got me on your phone or your, your iPad or your computer. You can turn me up loud and listen to me. I also take our, our, the audio from our show and put it on as a podcast on iTunes. So there's lots of ways to listen to us. And then I'll take this video and put it up on YouTube. I had an email from somebody yesterday who said she binge watches YouTube, our YouTube channel when she's exercising. Well, we got a new habit starting tomorrow and that new habit is getting our butts up and moving just a little bit every day. You may have to start start slow, but it's slow and steady that's going to get us there. So let's get it done. Let's take these four habits. Get dressed to lace up shoes. Keep your sink clean and shiny because that, that gets your kitchen clean. Do a load of laundry and a load of dishes. And your house is going to look good. Know what's for dinner. That's going to keep you calm, especially right now. And be aware we may have some, some um, meat shortages, but guess what? We know how to fix a meal without meat. Meatless Mondays. I watched um, Miss Lois from Whippoorwill Hollow YouTube channel. She made, <laughs> Leanne's going to teach me how to do it, she made meatless meatballs. She made meatballs with zucchini. Now, I've had, I had pasta-less spaghetti with zucchini, but she made meatballs with zucchini, and it was adorable. So we could have meatless meals, too. Uh, I grew up on meatless meals. Pinto beans and cornbread. Doesn't get any better than that. Okay, folks, let's see what we got next. Do you have a calendar... But have you thought of a daily planner? Oh, I, she said, I know you have a calendar, but have you thought of a daily planner? Well, I have thought of a daily planner. And I thought, nope, doesn't work for fly babies. You know why it doesn't work? Every single hour of every single day. I've known people who were such perfectionists about their daily planner that they couldn't function without it. Guess what? We get up in the morning, we get dressed, we let our routines, our simple routines, as Scott Adams says, a system to your day. You get up and do the same thing every morning. You make your bed when your feet hit the floor, you go to your bathroom, you swish and swipe while you're in there, you get dressed in the clothes you picked out the night before, and before you know it, your house is on automatic pilot. So, those things don't need to be written down because they're in your control journal. Now, this is the closest thing. Let me get it right here. There goes my alcohol. Not drinking alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Many years ago, I took four by six note cards and turned them in to routines. Your control journal is just a place to keep your routines. They can be on post-it notes. On your bathroom mirror, that's how I kept mine because I needed them in front of my face. But a morning routine, an afternoon routine, and a before bed routine. There you go. 
my before bed routine, reboot the laundry. Who to thunk it? Lay out your clothes, take a bath. You pick out your clothes when you're getting ready to take a bath. Clear off a hot spot. And so you get up in the morning and your house doesn't look trashed. Straighten the coffee table. Put, put all the glasses, if you haven't run your dishwasher after dinner, clean up all the glasses and cups around and put them in the dishwasher. Brush your teeth and wash your face. Turn off the computer and go to bed at a decent hour. That's how it works. And it's just a place to keep your routine. So a little four by six photo album makes a simple, great w control journal. And then we have a basic weekly plan, which I have a day of each week that I do one of uh, today's Thursday. And Thursday is Windows. But we have a, a little chart that you can print off and put it in your bathroom so that you know when you walk out of the bathroom in the morning what you're doing that day. And I don't have it right in front of me, but it's on our website in the control journal section and you can print it out for free. This is a simple way to get it done. Okay, next question. And we're getting our prototype for our next year's calendar which starts in August we should have it today so I'm excited to see it we'll and we had the little calendars last year which they were a big hit so we're gonna sell those and a the larger version which is an amazing calendar where did I put it oh here it is we only have a few left so if you're new and you haven't gotten our 2020 calendar, it's on sale right now for 10 bucks, And it's got big, big... In fact, I want to check something right quick. So, I went into... I went into staying at home on the 17th of... Of March. So 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 days in March. And then it's been 29 days. So that's 30. 44 days I've been at home. 44 days. 44 days. Yep, I don't have it marked on this calendar, but I have it marked on another calendar. So keeping up with, you know, this is going to be a historic time. I promise you, we're probably never going to do this again. <laughs> and my sweet darling brought me a flower today. You just celebrate the little things. He brought me a trillium. Makes me happy. Next question. How many IUD is in the vitamin D? Well, let me pull it up here. Where is the cow mag? Here's the D. What it says on the package, and I need to get my magnifying glass, or if you don't have a magnifying glass, use your camera to take a picture of it. I do that all the time. But what I have here, it has 100 MCG. 100 MCG which I looked up this morning when I got that question, I looked up how to convert it to, um, to IUD, international units. And you multiply it times 40. So it's 4,000. If this has 100 times 40, it's 4,000 IUDs. And that is a good baseline to start with. And the directions say... Take one capsule daily as directed by your healthcare professional. Anyway, it's some good stuff. It'll keep you healthy. It keeps me healthy. But knowing what your vitamin D levels, getting your levels checked, you know, call up your doctor and ask them if you can have some blood work done 
or if you want to wait till later, pull your blood work from last year. And I keep my blood work, and it's probably in your emails. Um, look up your blood work and see what it was. Know what your always know what your levels are of everything. Robert gets his done, I go over them. Ben got his done, and I had Leanne go over them. So we could see where things were missing. Okay, next question. How do I combat combat the I'm the only one syndrome? I get frustrated when it seems like I'm the only one doing anything. Laundry, dishes, trash, and taking care of the kids while working from home. How did I get rid of this mommy martyr mentality? Well, sister, you got to flip the switch. Just like with forgiveness, it's flipping a switch. If you're expecting somebody to come and rescue you, people aren't coming over to our houses anymore. You got to flip the switch. If it's going to get done, it's going to get it done by you and the little army you have in your house. So you become the director. You become the general in your house. You become the person who is producing this play and you get the kids involved. Train them up in the way they should go and when they're old, they won't depart from it. So let go of your martyrdom. How do you let go of your martyrdom? Well, you got to say, I am blessed beyond measure to have this family that I always wanted and jump in. Think about it this way. Single women do it all by themselves. Military spouses are home taking care of the family while the other one is off. And right now they're in war zones in big cities fighting this unseen enemy, this virus. So folks, you can do it. But you got to get off your pity pot because we're all got the same amount of hours in the day. And if you're, if you're complaining that your children are tearing out more than you can pick up in an hour, then you're not keeping them close enough to you. And I know you're working from home. A lot of you are, which is wonderful that you have that opportunity. Be thankful. But, you know, all work and no play makes Jane a dull girl. So you've got to set aside two minutes every hour to get the kids directed and putting their things away and set an alarm for the top of every hour. Let the alarm go off, play the two minute cleanup song and get the kids picking up and putting away. Put, do your morning routine, get dressed to lace up shoes, get something for dinner in your crock pot and you got to cook them lunch. You got to have some lunch too. So having lunch for them and you know, you can fix lunch while you're putting something for dinner in the crock pot or the one pot or whatever you've got. You can do this. And it does, it's not rocket science, folks. It is not rocket science. But you got to quit complaining because that complaining attitude, it's ruining. It's, it's like one bad apple messes up the whole bushel of apples. You've got to You've got to cut that bad part off. You can still use the apple, but you got to cut the bad part off. So start doing things with a smile upon your face. I mean, we have some, and if, <laughs> if you want to get cute, put on a mask with paint a smile on it, paint a smile on your mask and get people looking at and laughing all day long because that's fun. That's doing something fun in your house. Okay, next question. Uh, when will you get an Android app? It isn't happening anytime soon. We're just trying to keep our heads above water right now. And that's everybody. I mean, there's. I know Michael's had this project on his uh, punch list for for a long time and he's a one man he's a one man geek squad that's what it boils down to he he's you know he's doing everything he can and he's a stay at home dad with two kids at home and now his wife is working from home and so they have a busy busy life 
right now. He he emailed me yesterday and said his his wife's brother is a nurse and they're having problems getting getting some equipment. Well, his wife is an engineer. Michael's wife is an engineer and they're making some equipment. So he he's he um used our UPS number to ship this protective equipment to his brother-in-law so for the people that he works with just to be able to help out we're helping out any way we can so quit being the martyr and we may not have an android app but we we do have the ability with our our we have a bunch of of reminders on our website and you can set those reminders up on your own phone if you want to you can take and and use your alarm system to set up reminders on your phone and your phone becomes your fly lady control journal and everybody has a little clock on their phone and you just touch the clock and the different alarms can come up I have an alarm all day I have alarms going all day long to remind me to do things. This is how I got organized. Was I had a Palm Pilot. It wasn't phone back then. I had a Palm Pilot. And I set up an electronic version. Of a control journal. On my phone. I didn't need an app to do that. I just set it all up. So at 8 o'clock in the morning. Or whatever time you get up in the morning. That starts your morning routine. And have a little checklist. Dress to lace up shoes. Asking yourself question, is your sink shining? And don't ignore them. Get up and do them. So you can set these all up as alarms on your phone. You don't have to wait for an app. That's just another excuse. You don't have, we have very few people use our app anyway. It's better to you to embrace it and, and do it yourself. Because when we do it ourselves, it sticks. When you go through the motions of writing out a card to put in your control journal or setting up an alarm, it's going to be amazing. Okay. What is the best way to clean, to clean ceramic tile in the shower that has hard water scum? Well... It's called the purple rag. I keep one of these in my shower. I gave one to my sister-in-law several years ago. And she was having trouble with her shower. And the same thing with hard water. And she had a beautiful brand new shower. This rag grabs soap scum like you wouldn't believe. And guess what soap scum is? It's soap. So you don't even need a cleaner. All you got to do is take this rag and work on like a square foot at a time. Uh, four square feet is like this. If you do an area that that size, every time you're letting the com conditioner stay on your hair, you're going to have a clean shower before you know it. And then you just keep it clean. And our rubber, uh, where's our rubber sweeper? I don't know where it is. I must have taken it into the into the living room, but um, Kathy uses a mop to wipe down her shower after she she um, gets it all wet, so that she doesn't have hard water build up. But you can do it. Our rubber sweeper has a squeegee on one side. Or go to the dollar store. Well, if you can get to the dollar store. But if you have a sweet squeegee in your car, you can squeegee the water off your shower after you get it all clean. And it's it's one minute to keep your shower clean. It's like swish and swipe for the shower. So I would use a purple rag or our mop once it's cleaned off and you've gotten all the soap scum off. And you're going to have a shower that is always going to be beautiful. If you do a little bit every day. Next question. Well, if the virus has done anything, it's allowed me to see 
that saying no, what saying no would be like. How do I keep my calendar free from clutter when the world starts up again? I think we're all going to be eliminating some things. Uh, one thing that is good to do is to keep your kids all in the same thing. So if they're going to play Little League, then Little League Baseball, then everybody plays Little League Baseball. And then if they're going to do skiing, then everybody in the wintertime, my grandchildren are on a ski team. Uh, they go once a week to a mountain not far from, well, it's about an hour and a half from where they live, but their church group goes on 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 a ski team thing. Uh, but they both do it. They both do it. So that cuts down on having to go from pillar to post and that sort of thing. Um, Ethan is in scouts. But Ethan's almost grown too. He he he'll be 18 in six months, and that's just scary. That's just scary. Anyway, kids grow up fast, but keeping people, keeping the kids in the same things, and you know, limiting your stuff. You figure out what's a priority for you. You know, you got you got to do that. You got to do that, and then maybe you're going to do more things virtually, like moms have book clubs. And Google, uh, was it Google? Yeah, Google just opened up Google Office uh, that everybody can utilize something that was similar to, to Zoom, but they don't send your stuff to China. And they do virtual get-togethers. You can do it with families too. I think you can do up to 15 people or something like that. So get together, talk about things. You may get to be around each other more virtually than you would trying to get all your ducks in a row and get together. So, and I don't think we're going to be me meeting in restaurants as much as we maybe more parks and that sort of thing with social distancing. But remember, take your hand sanitizer, wash your hands, wear your mask, and we'll be good until this is all over with. But learning to say no has been a good exercise for people because we couldn't. We, we couldn't. And... You know, being a little cautious is not a bad thing. So just tell people you're not ready. You're not ready. And if they don't understand that, then by golly, they probably didn't need to be your friend anyway. <laughs> and, and you can you can probably pick and choose the friends you really want to keep. What advice would you give a single 25-year-old woman doing fly lady? Sometimes I find it hard to stay motivated. Well, you got to do it for you, sister. You got to do it for you. And I can't motivate you. You've got to realize that there's all, all aspects of, of people are in fly lady. You know, we... At one time, we did a survey that about 45% of the people worked outside of the house. We had 45% of the people that worked, that stayed home. And then there was a 10%, 10% that worked at home for money. Now, that in the last six weeks has gone up exponentially. We have more people with the ability to work from home. And what they're finding out is when you reduce the travel time, they get more stuff done. And their houses are calm because they're home and they're not having to drag the baby to the, to the sitter or to daycare. They're taking care of their own children. They're getting dinner on the table. They're, um, they're, they're feeling good about themselves because they're doing these things. Not that people who worked out the side, side of the home didn't do these things, but they're getting things done and they're not feeling guilty. So they're being more productive. I know it sounds weird, but it's happening all over the world. And it's a wonderful thing to see. It is a wonderful thing to see. But staying motivated, turn on some fun music, turn on our music, download our music. It's on iTunes. It's also 
on our website. You can purchase it off our website. It's a fun thing to, the kid CD just guides you through your whole day. Starts with getting up in the morning to going to bed at night. So there's a song for everything. Do a weekly home blessing in two minutes. Two minutes to mop your floor. Racing a timer is a powerful way to get things done. And I've lost my timer. Where did I, there it is. I got it wet and I had to dry it. Use your timer. If you're not utilizing a timer, you're missing out on some quality time. Two minutes can do a world of things. Your perfectionism is talking. You know, you want it all to be perfect, but you don't have time right now. And uh, why bother? Because you're the only one at home. Well, you deserve to have a home that blesses you. And especially working from home these days, we need a home that looks good. That's what I love noticing people, other people's homes. The men go holed up in a closet somewhere to do interviews or in their man cave or in a room. Uh, women want to be out and open in their living rooms and they want to show you the art on their walls. And it's just a huge difference between the woman being interviewed and a guy being interviewed. So the guys want books behind them and some of them are pretty messy. But the women's homes are just lovely and tranquil. You need to set up your home to reflect you. That was one of the best compliments I ever got that that mine and Robert's home look just like the both of us. And I may be doing more shows out on the back deck because we have a beautiful forest. We live in a forest of 10 acres of trees and it makes us happy. It really does make us happy. <clears throat> How many washings before the pink rags don't share their color with other things in the laundry? Okay. We don't wash our pink rags and purple rags and silver rags with anything else. You don't do that. Pink rags have very little dye in them. I've not, but the purple rags do. And I like to use my purple rags in my dishwash, in my dishwater when I fill up my sink with hot soapy water until they get bled out with the hot. Cause I'm always putting, I'm taking the dishes from my dishwater and putting them in the dishwasher. So I don't worry about the dye. And, and then before you know it, they're bled out and they're good to go. But they stay this color. They stay this beautiful color forever. They don't wear out. They just don't wear out. It's just an amazing product. I had somebody complaining. You know, I really, I'm not going to buy any more from you, even though they're a great price, because I have enough. I've had them for 15 years, and they're still great. So I, I used my little uh, sculpture in the window the other day to hang all mine up after I washed them. I, I can, you can wash the rags, the pink rags, silver rags, purple rags with the multi-wand cover and the mop pad. And that's a load. You don't have to do a huge load of clothes to do load. You just change the water setting. That's all you gotta do. And they're on sale. Pink rags are half price. You get a dozen of them for 10 bucks and then the purple rags are on a BOGO. Put one set in your cart and we'll send you another set. Okay, next. Oh, uh, one other thing. Being a fly baby has been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Well, that is a beautiful, beautiful testimonial because you do it for you, not for anybody else, but you do it for you. Now, you might start out wanting to do it for somebody else like I did. I wanted to keep my sink clean and shiny for Robert. Well, I was part of that because he said he'd make me coffee every day if I left one side of the sink open. And he still makes me coffee to this day. In fact, I still have a little bit more. It's cold, but it's still good. Uh, let's see. Where's the next question? 
You have mentioned that you burn mail simply because it has your name and address on it. Can you explain more about this? I figured it has to do with identity theft, but I don't understand how junk mail with your name and address can be used, especially since property ownership is available online. It's just something I don't want to go in the trash. Is Am I being a perfectionist? Probably, but I don't care. I have a fireplace and I need kindling and junk mail and mail that I didn't solicit goes in the trash. The, the, the mail that we get our bills, like Robert gave me our insurance card for our cars today. It came in the mail yesterday. He paid the bill and got the new cards. And did he keep it all? No, he handed me my cards. He kept his cards and he threw the rest away. I don't want people getting our insurance stuff. It may not be um, identity theft, but it gives them enough to be, if they got enough in the trash, they could put things together. So I like to just use a fire pit or use my fireplace. In the summertime, we use a fire pit, but we always check and do it either when it's raining outside if we use the fire pit or if we just had a couple three inches of rain, couple or three inches of rain. That's something we say in the South. So that's just me. If you live in a city, I would never allow, get a shredder. If you don't want to burn it, then get a shredder. And you can donate shreds to humane societies and animal shelters to put the shreds in the, in, in, in the puppy, puppy uh, kennels. But my dog would probably eat it. That's probably why I have a trillium. Why my husband brought me a flower. Because she probably tried to eat it. Okay, next question. I don't know how to deal with hubby's clutter. I clean around it. And don't nag him about it. How can I be at peace mentally with it? Trying not to be a whiner. Well, trying is lying a lot of times. And I've said this many, many times. Trying is lying. You got to let it go. Now, you can ask him nicely. If he, and you can't ask it in woman speak. You've got to to ask him directly. Honey, I've gotten all of this area cleaned up. Could you see if you could, will you reorganize this area and and I'll give you some boxes or bins or something to put things in so you have a place to put your stuff. Uh, and, you know, just ask him nicely to do it. Our husbands will do anything in the world for us if we just ask. But we can't manipulate and you can't say, well, this place would look better if you would take care of this. Well, that's not, that's woman speak. So don't do that. Just ask him nicely with a please and a thank you afterwards. And always thank him for everything he does. Like Robert went and got dinner last night. We had barbecue. And it was rainy and he doesn't like to drive in the rain. But he doesn't want me going out. So he went and got dinner. And I said, thank you for going to get dinner. He said, you're welcome. So we can help our husbands get things done, but we have to do it in a kind way that's not perceived as manipulative by the, the, um, male in our, the males in our families. Because little boys think this way too. Because women try to be diplomatic like, don't you think you need a coat? If Robert's mother had said that to him, don't you think you need a coat? He would have thought, now he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have um, um, backtalked her. But he would have thought in his head, if I thought I needed a coat, I would have gotten one. But he would have never said it. But he would have thought it. Now, 
when there have been times when Robert was 11, he's been retired 11 years. When there have been times when it's been really cold out and he was going to court somewhere, you know, he could get in the car in his, in the garage and he didn't have to really be out in the weather except to go a short distance from the car into the courthouse. But he would have a distance of driving an hour and 20 minutes sometimes. And you never know what's going to happen on the road because he has had it happen to him. He got stuck on an exit one time when it started snowing and he had to leave court early. And he was stranded on an exit for eight hours. Now, when I think he needs to carry a coat, I say to him, honey, it's really cold outside. And I'll, I'll feel more at ease if you take your big heavy coat and gloves with you. And he says, okay. And he does it. He may not wear it, but he's got it if he needs it. What a wonderful thing. But he does it for me. He didn't think he needed one because he's only got to run from the car to the courthouse. But if he got stuck, I would be worried about him. So he, he does it for me. Can you start zone cleaning if you can can you start zone cleaning if you have a cluttered drawer? Well, I don't know why you're asking that question. Because next week we're going to be in the kitchen and we've got drawers in our kitchen like crazy. But you can't dump a drawer out on the kitchen counter. You're going to make a bigger mess. Read the Fly Lady 11 Commandments. If you will just take, open a drawer. I don't have a junk drawer, y'all. I have a miscellaneous drawer. And then I have a pet drawer. But my miscellaneous drawer is really a tools drawer. Now, I can open that drawer up and I can precisely pluck pieces of things that I don't use anymore that I'm never going to use. And it works. You can clean out a drawer just a little bit without having to dump it all out. And yes, we zone clean our missions every day that come out in our flight plan is zone cleaning. It's zone cleaning. So folks, you can do this. You're doing zone cleaning when you do the missions. I detail cleaned my kitchen yesterday because I needed to get rid of the baking stuff. So I put everything away, put my mixer back the way I like it, and everything's done. Now, next week, since I've gotten a little head start on zone two, I'll be opening up my utensils drawer that has all every odds and end gadget that known to man. And I'll reorganize that drawer. And I might get rid of some stuff. But I might not. But that's where I keep everything I need for my cooking is right there. Now I have my regular utensils that are in a crock right beside my stove like Leanne has. And that makes it easy. But not everything has to be out all the time. That's what your drawers are for. I find it hard to organize my crafting. Giving it away or tossing it isn't an option because I constantly use the items to make extra income. Is there a good way of tackling this kind of stuff? Right now it's spread over three or four rooms. What method would work best to tackle it into easy manageable chunks of time? Okay, I have an answer for this. And utilize, we're not going anywhere right now. Utilize your luggage. You've got luggage. You've got rolly luggage. You've got tote bags. Utilize these things for your craft projects. Now think about it. If you had a, a Rubbermaid, or maybe you use Rubbermaid bins or some Tupperware that you're not using. You can put your paints and things in certain little little bins and close them up so they don't leak on anything 
put confine all the stuff you need for one craft and label it so you know where things are so if you've got a piece of luggage that you're going to keep your quilting stuff in put your quilting stuff in now it probably won't hold your stash of fabric but you get another piece of luggage for all of that and that way you could roll it to where you're using it and then you could put it up and put it back where it belongs i did this with scrapbooking supplies i got my daughter-in-law a scrapbooking rolly bag because she and her friends would get together and do scrapbooking she doesn't do that anymore but she had a rolly bag with all her pens and papers and all kinds of wonderful stuff in it and she could do her scrapbooking and it was a take-along bag she could take it to the basement and work on a table in the basement or she could work at the kitchen table while the kids were doing their homework she had it mobile and that's the secret to crafting stuff is to take it where you use it if you're going to go paint in the wood somewhere with your easel have a rolly bag it'll be fun but you may need to declutter too i ended up getting rid of my quilting clutter i kept a cutting mat because i use it for everything and i kept a cutting wheel but my stash of quilt quilts that i'd put together i gave them away they were weighing heavy on me because I didn't use them and I needed to give them to somebody else. And I blessed a lady from Michigan came down and got my quilting stuff and she made quilts for foster children. What a beautiful thing to make quilts for foster children. So they'd have something of their own and you can make your clutter have a new meaning. If you will get rid of the stuff you don't love, and bless someone else with it and probably quit looking at Pinterest so much <laughs> I know um, yeah, I'm bad about that too but there's some great ideas out there Facebook is full of ideas too uh, and YouTube is full of ideas so have fun with what you love and let go of the stuff you don't and if you're making money with it go for it but if you if it's spread all over the place and you can't find what you're looking for, you're not going to make money with it. We got a testimony at one time. She was a doll artist and she had made a Dorothy doll for, from the Wizard of Oz and it was on display at the Smithsonian. Now, she moved into a smaller apartment from a three bedroom house. She moved into a two bedroom apartment. And her stuff was so stashed, all her paints and her doll making stuff was so stashed in this one extra room, she couldn't find anything. And for five years, she quit doing her art. And you know what that does to you, to your soul, when you quit doing the thing you love? It deprives you of joy. So get your art supplies organized into clear Rubbermaid bins or suitcases or I know you've probably got a stash of tote bags you can utilize for this for for putting your your craft supplies together and make them mobile because if you if you'll organize them you'll use them if they're not organized and you can't find anything you won't use it well folks we've been going at this for an hour Minus the time it took me to try to print things out and do all that stuff. Plan B happens. Well, y'all have a good rest of the day. I'll see you at 3 o'clock. And, you know, check out our fly shop. You've kept us going for the last 40, 40 some days. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us. And we've got this new supplement line. I thank you. I can't wait to get your testimonials about the supplements because my supplements made a huge difference in me. I can't wait to start taking these. Talk to you at 3 o'clock. Bye. Try and shut things down.